ASP Stuffcast. This is your host, Albert Joseph Felice III, with guests Stephen Felice and Paul Felice finally joining us. Hey, how's it going? This is Stephen Felice. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> Hi, this is Paul. Paul, hello. Also, Paul Felice. So, the Felice brothers. We're here for episode two. November, there we go. November How 5th. exciting. Yes. And this, this is this is not a testes episode? This is not a testes. No testicles will be involved in this episode. So if I, Although it may can't come up in further discussion. Might, some testicles might drop in conversation. <laughs> Hillary, Hillary Clinton's testicles may drop. They might drop by. Conversation. Some hairy testicles. So... Uh, All right, so, so let's, uh, <clears throat> we're going to so introduce ourselves to our, our listeners, or at least the one in Indonesia. The one we got. You found one? You <laughs> found one. Okay. We have a subscriber already. Already. We're already awaiting, making headway. Awaiting for episode two. So how All about, right. How about we... Introduce ourselves briefly. Say a little bit about yourself. Let's start with uh, Stephen. Okay. Hello, everybody from Indonesia. <laughs> I, uh, I have been part of the Felice family for the past 34 years, and uh, I now work as an engineer for the Department of Defense. So I, I can't talk too much about that. Right. Secret. So... Uh, they could uncover this podcast and terminate your employment. That's right. So Stephen, Felice. if that one, if our one Indonesia Indonesian uh, listener wants to do that, yes, turn, he or she will turn you in. Yeah. All right, it's good. And then we got Paul. I'm Paul Felice, and I've been in the family for thirty three and a half years. <laughs> and I, I work for Kaiser Permanente in the Medicare Compliance Department. Wow! Wow! So I could uh, that that could ha- this could have some ramifications there. Yeah. Jeez, so be careful. Your employees Are, might. Everybody <clears throat> here, everybody, part of this podcast is very official and uh, sounds sounds proper. Uh, so we don't want to mess with these people. <laughs> Or to watch out. <laughs> yeah, but but we're not like that in, in real life, I guess. I don't know. No. Nope. Nope. So, what, what about Albert Felice III? Ah, about me. Who's this guy? This guy. Yeah. What am I all about? Well, I've been in the Felice family for 37 years and several months. Some change. Some change. Yeah. I, uh, I teach philosophy. I'm a philosophy professor at Arizona State University. Well, that that doesn't sound very official. Yeah. We have somebody in in medical compliance, somebody from the DOD, <laughs> and now we have a philosopher. That that just doesn't doesn't mix. Does not mix. <laughs> Something went wrong in the Felice gene pool, <laughs> or, or or went right we yeah. as we went down. So, <laughs> I guess you could call me the wet noodle of the family. <laughs> what, what's a- <laughs> What's a wet noodle? Right there. That is me, uh. the, wet, the wet noodle. I'll try to come up with a sound effect of wet noodles. All right, all right. So that that's going to be part of the podcast is just having having random sound effects. Yes, right? I'm going to inter- Yeah, inter- I'm going to add some sound effects. Well, I only have wet noodle sounds so far. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to add more like a Homer Simpson. Don't sound or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to make it entertaining. That's what everybody does. Yeah, but but that's that's kind of how the uh, but first I, first podcast went, right? Because I don't. Did you listen to it, Paul? Yeah, I listened to all thirty-two minutes. Nice. All right. You, you and very and, entertaining minute. Endure the and, uh, ball balls and testi- <laughs> testicle talk. And you had all you had all the YouTube. Uh, Clips going in and out, right? Oh, the t- Donald Trump, yeah. Yeah. So, I, what did you think of that political discussion <laughs> back, back in our political banter? I thought it was pretty entertaining. I mean, we uh, 
you talked about all the Republican candidates or the lack of quality candidates. Donald Trump's the front runner just because he's rich and has fake hair. So, and then Jeb Bush seems to be the favorite because he speaks Spanish. Yeah. But that, that's, yeah. I've learned that I guess he speaks Spanish because his wife is like Puerto Rican or something, or he met her in Florida. Yeah. So that's why he can speak Spanish. But he does have see I'm I'm thinking his son now, his Jeb Bush Jr. is probably the guy that we want in the office at some point. Cause yeah. he's you know, he's a the younger generation. And he has that Bush name, so Bush. he probably will become a favorite in a few years. That, that's what Marco Rubio is. He's already part of that younger yeah, generation. Yeah, but he doesn't have the Bush last name. Oh. Yes. The, the, no, yeah. the Bush legacy. Which so we'll, have to, we'll have to look up clips of Jeb Bush Senior or Jr. and see how his Spanish is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but so you think it might skip? You don't think Jeb will get in? I don't think so. I think it's going to be tough for him. So Is that because just... of the the wet noodle effect? That and I'll have to look up that Stephen Colbert clip from a couple nights ago where he just sounded very unconfident. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to look yeah. that up. Yeah, well, he's been sounding confident uh, more recently, I think. But so it was but, just a few days ago, though. Oh, okay. So he's still kind of in that wet noodle phase, and, and I guess supposedly Rubio's having more of an impact or influence recently because of his strong uh, performance in that last debate. I don't know. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys really listen to the news about that stuff or keep up it's you know not really that entertaining but no, i just read <laughs> philosophy books every day <laughs> yeah well you like you know you know npr right they keep you up to up to speed on that stuff npr oh, i should remind yeah. our viewers in indonesia that we are a non-jewish podcast we are actually we are Ital- <laughs> we are italian what are we we're italian nicaraguans <laughs> We're unaffiliated, We're but unaffiliated. but uh, yeah, NPR tends to have that little liberal democratic view, Jewish uh, view point, with some weird sounding uh, We're gonna broadcasters. Do- but uh, Albert thinks one of their broadcasters was punched in the balls, testicles, and <laughs> oh, Guy so Ross. now he yeah. speaks kind of nasally. Guy Ross. Everyone on NPR has an annoying whiny high pitched sounding voice nasally voice yeah yeah whereas the, yes. whereas the Felice <laughs> podcast speakers we all sound the same yeah we just all we, if somebody was a listen just, listen to us it, that indonesian thinks it's all this, the person just talking to themselves but. yeah if we could just change our voices to sound higher and nasally or and we could all be on npr <laughs> My name's Albert. Can you tell? <laughs> now we can tell. Now, now you just got to keep it up. Let's listen to Jeb Bush speak some Spanish. All right. legal después de una temporada. Gobernador, recientemente el candidato Trump hablando de Trump. Yeah. I just said that Jeb Bush talking about his lack of self confidence. His lack of self confidence. Yeah. Jeez. So he's actually admitting that he has a lack of self confidence. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 listen to this. See, Marco Rubio would never do that. He he has a lot of self confidence. He just needs to drink a lot of water. <laughs> with a with a in a bottle. In a little tiny plastic bottle. Ten yeah, feet that, away from the camera, and it's uh, bad for the environment. It is <laughs> drink drink out of bottled water. So, so he's not for a. So, do you want uh, me to play the whole clip? I don't know how long it is. Just so one minute. Okay, let me see. Let's play yeah. that. Pain is still in a very tough place. The storyline is bad, so every development is seen through a spooky prism. 
The latest sign of trouble for Bush is campaign's chief, chief operating officer abruptly left the campaign with no explanation as to why. Bush is still trying to ease donor concerns after that poor debate performance. It's going to be in Iowa this weekend, and he's launching a Jeb Can Fix It tour in Florida and South Carolina next week. So, John, we're on day two now of tracking Jeb. Is it a death watch? Or is he at the beginning of a comeback? Uh, I'm checking the pulse of, uh, of, the, of that man. It's still weak right now. I haven't seen him do anything other than Jeb promising to donors that is yesterday that he would get better in some kind of undefinable way. I haven't seen him do anything yeah, in the last 24 hours be that makes me think him, that they're but suddenly they've turned the corner and they're going to come storming back. They're the calling him I think dead. He the debate. He yeah, announced that the reason poor, he's going to be guy. back he's is because he's already dead. Of right. You know, an organization. Right. Message, message, message. The problem for Bush now is that everybody is on death watch. Everybody's turned against him, or almost everybody. Yeah. He needs some good news. He need, you know, the Super PAC already went on TV with ads. That didn't raise his poll numbers. He either needs rising poll numbers, he needs a strong debate performance in the next debate in Milwaukee, or something else. The release of his book is probably not good enough news to turn this around, to get the narrative back where he can go after Rubio. Yeah, well, he didn't go after Rubio when he was strong. Now he's weak. Right. All those all those things are fair enough. But I, I got to say, it's still the case that he does not have on the basis of everything you and I jointly have seen in early states. We did, does not have voters, actual voters, human beings out there saying, I want to vote for this guy. But he has Martians <laughs> voting for him. He has non-human Martians voting for Jeb. <laughs> that's uh, that's how the media is. They uh, they change everything around. And what um, what makes a, a a politician a good debater? Well, I guess they have to be very confident. They can't they can't have a lack of self confidence, right? So and that's what we're alluding. So it's to not me. about having good arguments. It's about no. Well, at least when you're trying to be elected, I mean. So you have to kind of uh, get yourself your foot in the door. And the way you do that, you know, Trump has that. Uh, Rubio has that with that stick up his butt. But Jeb, you know, he, he's not a likable guy. He's a like, okay. He's a, that we're not saying he's not a likable guy, right? We're saying he, he's not a very assertive of right. himself, right? Yeah. But yeah. So, and then you've said it like last week, we were talking about it. He he um he's kind of like that that what what noodle he skipped a generation of bushes you know hit that that bush mentality that uh Smoke personality right uh-huh. yeah so um so is this going to turn into a political only uh, I, podcast? Well, that's how we Dude. did it back in the Barney days. We we talked. That's all about, we talked about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Ross Perot, Bill Clinton. Okay. Okay. Al well, Gore. you're you're a philosophy professor, so you, there's other. We can talk things, about yeah. we can talk about other things. Let's talk about well. First of all, anything new? What's new with you guys? I mean, what's new? What yeah, outside the news? outside the ro- world of politics? I'll, <laughs> So, for example, I experienced an earthquake in Arizona. Well, how did earthquake? An earthquake so in Arizona, and it 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 seems completely out of I, the ordinary. Well, do you, you sure it's not related to fracking? If you know what fracking, fracking is. Oh, you're bringing so you're going back to politics now. We're going to talk yeah, about well, fracking and oil. Hey, you know, if <laughs> you were talking about politics, uh, but yeah, if if there's a some some fracking drilling going on in the area, you know, that, that could cause that. But, but it was it, an it was, actual. It was, a, it was a little one, right? A three point seven, maybe five point three. Yeah, it's kind of out of the ordinary. Uh, but yeah, fracking is the, a man-made thing that could cause something like that. But um, yeah, I don't, you, you think it could be uh, uh, climate change or? Global warming related. It might be uh, Bush's. I uh, know not Bush's. The <laughs> Trump's hairdo caused Trump, an earth. The Trump's Trump's uh, toupee fell toupee. In, in one of the faults. Caused <laughs> <laughs> caused the reverberation in in the faults. Or or everyone is probably throwing up from the E. coli in Chipotle. And so all their throw up is seeping into the. Earthquake faults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard that in the news too. Yeah. Uh, Chipotle, Chipotle. Um, had some E. coli breakout. Yeah. Why was 
Why well, was it's just there up was, in the there northwest, was right? Shit in the meat. People were eating crap. But why? It, That's did why you, you shouldn't eat meat. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, yes, of course. But so we could but they're <clears throat> they're pigs. They uh <clears throat> they're allowed to roam around, right? In in the fields, right? <clears throat> so so they're free pigs. So it's okay to eat them. Mm, but they still feel pain. But but they lived a fulfilling life. So then you, when they're done living a fulfilling life, you chop them up into little pieces of pig. Um, nah, I don't know. I don't know. They're they're uh, non-human. Ah, uh, because they're non-human, because they don't belong to our species. We can do whatever we want. We can eat them. Uh, well, the Bible says we have dominion. The over, Bible uh, oh. over animals. Hmm. It says dominion, but it doesn't mean kill and eat, consume flesh. Hmm. I, I, I don't know. It depends on what Webster dictionary version you're reading. What uh, dominion reading. means? Yep. We have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did I did hear that story, uh, but I wasn't sure why it was only to the uh, northwest area and so but it still at least drives me not to want to go to any chipotle yeah you, you might throw up violently ill throw up you might get violently yeah. ill yes so uh nope that won't be going to chipotle uh anytime soon not even for did, their tofu did we lose paul way. i'm here oh, okay just yeah. looking up, so I need to make a correction on what I said earlier. It's not Jeb oh. Bush Jr. who's the front runner. It's actually his Jeb Bush's older son, George P. Bush, George Prescott Bush. George, oh. he's George the guy who's Piss. supposed to be running Bush. the uh, George the whole zeitgeist. Okay, okay. Colbert had a clip. Colbert had a clip on uh, this guy, George. P. Papa. George mm-hmm. Bush. P. Bush. George Bush. And, uh, yes, he kept saying how he was, n- he is not a scientist. And if you go back. Okay, that's who it was. And if you go back and you, there's a clip, maybe yeah, you could look this up, Albert. Uh, look up Colbert. Uh, not a scientist. Something like okay, that. Let me, let me look. I sent you the. Jeb Bush one that Colbert used a couple nights ago about his lack of confidence. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look up that Colbert not a scientist. Okay, so the other I'm... clip that I played was totally irrelevant. It was the wrong. Yeah, one. well, I mean, it's your typical political fodder. Okay, yeah, just people just chatting nonstop, like right. we are. <laughs> Except they're on TV and we're just podcasting to one person in Indonesia. Two sworn enemies. Ah, uh, damn ads! They won't let me turn up the volume. <laughs> Control. Well, it's free. America's got to get paid. Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play the clip from Colbert moment to talk about something I care deeply about. Start it. But instead, I'm going to talk about Donald Trump. 215? If you can fast forward through. Okay. Here we go. But no matter how tough it gets, don't count it out. Because as he explained, he is a fighter. Just talk about your resilience, because people, some people don't think you know how to fight. Oh, man. They don't know me. They don't know me. Could you sign this to I eat nails when I wake up, and then I have breakfast. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jeb eats nails when he wakes up. And I believe him. Am I still running for president? <laughs> oh, he, he eats his fingernails. I thought he meant he eats, like, nails, hammer nails. No, he eats his fingernails. He eats his fingernails. (laughs) (laughs) And Jeb wasn't done with the tough talk in that it's sort of tough for him to talk. 
Are people underestimating your ability to fight back and your willingness to fight back? I hope they are. I hope they are. This is like, for me, the, 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 the greater the adversity, the more, first of all, it means I'm going to get better. i got to get better. I know I have to get better. I mean, come on. Um, I have enough humility to know that i got to get better. <laughs> really inspires confidence in your candidates. <laughs> I can imagine his address to Congress. The state of our union is, look, it's, I know it's got to get better. I mean, come on. It, it has to, right? And don't underestimate America, but I hope you do. Because I eat nails for breakfast, and God bless you, and may God bless you. know what? I'll see myself out. Um, <laughs> a moment to talk about. That. Yeah, no, we can't have has we can't have a wet noodle. No, you don't want someone really who country. admits that they need to get better. You want someone like Trump who says, "I know I'm better than all of you." Yeah, that's what you want. That's what people like. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But wouldn't isn't that what you you want somebody like that with that's confident running the country? No. Yeah. Got to smoke them out. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be the most powerful person. In the world, you don't want somebody that eats nails for breakfast, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't get that comment at all. I uh, eat nails. Uh, uh, he, why, eats, why? he eats. He eats. <laughs> I, it's a, I like like nails, toenails. Yeah. <laughs> I eat my toenails for breakfast. He should have been more clear. <laughs> what type of nail? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they were, on you know, nails. The, the the nails you hammer in in a wall or something, maybe that's you know that's powerful. You know, it's uh, it could be looked at that in a certain way. <laughs> but if he's ch chattering his nails, his own fingernails to bits, yeah. that's that's a wet noodle. That is a wet noodle. That's when I have to play the sound effect. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Sounds like a. <laughs> squirmy worm. noodles slithering across the wall <laughs> the slimy wall that's jeb bush right there uh, all right uh, can you can you search for clips there because i don't know how to send it here yet what do you mean you want to if you can go to uh youtube and type in colbert not a scientist okay I don't know. It's a long five-minute clip, but I got to search for where it talks about George P. Yeah. Mas George Master P. So that's where it's scary. I mean, if you had an earthquake in Arizona, which there should never, ever be an earthquake in the desert like that, <laughs> that could be the sign of, you know, the end of days. Uh -huh. And here he comes Jeb Bush and then his son, George Prescott. He oh, could man. be the the leader of this downfall of the entire world. Uh oh. It's all these conspiracy theories coming true. Yeah, that's that's do we want to encourage our Indonesian listener to <laughs> I don't wanna frighten them to either. watch Zeitgeist? No. <laughs> yes, in I mean it's explained all there in Zeitgeist. I can't find the uh Scientist clip. Uh, okay. Let me let me keep searching here. Did you send it to us, Paul? Or no, I just the sent text? the the one we just listened to. Okay. All right. So let's. <clears throat> so that's is that enough politics, I, or we want to keep going that, on? That's enough politics. Let, let's move on yeah. with the uh, the World Series that ended this week. With the uh, Royals dominating over the New York Mets. The New York yeah, Mets played like um, they were wet noodles. Making well, errors in key they made moments. A bunch of errors. Well, didn't they have a chance in game one? But they blew it. So if they had won that first game, I think what, could, would we be looking at the Mets as a champion? I was hoping that. Probably. And, I, that's really where the Mets blew it. It was game one. They should have won that game, and it would have changed the entire series. No, I can't but, remember. Were they winning that game? Yeah, they were winning. They were, they were winning. up 4-3. to three, And in the bot or t yeah, bottom of the ninth, and they gave up a home run with two outs, I think it was, to Alex Gordon. 
and that tied the game and they went to extra innings and eventually lost. Yep. And you just don't recover from that. Once you blow a game in the World Series, the only way that you can come back is if the other team blows a game just like that. Yeah. And that just didn't happen. The Royals, just kept, they had their own comebacks twice after that, including game five. Right. Well, and that they just, but see, the Royals are that type of team. I, I don't know which Giants team you want to compare them to, but World Series Giants team, um, but uh, they just keep coming at you, right? I mean, yeah. That's, that's what they did against the Astros. And I, I think you were thinking the Astros were going to win, right? Yeah, I, I liked the Astros, but they blew that game. I think that was a game five, right? Or game four. That was game uh, it was one. four. It was game four, and they were actually, yeah, yeah right. they are going to pull it out. They were trying to close it out that game, and uh, um, they just came back after that. Uh, it, 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 it sounded like two different games. I mean, if you, I was watching that whole game, and they were just pouring it on, the Astros. They, they had hit like three home runs. Uh, who was their rookie? Uh who hits all those home runs? Correa. Oh, yeah. Correa, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, next inning, they had to bring in a reliever, and I guess the Astros don't really have good relief pitching. I don't no, know. well, they, they, they do. They did in the – they have good late relief, but not middle relief. Okay. So then they just got hit after hit. Before you know it, they are – they had oh, yeah, they had the bases loaded with nobody out. So mm. that's all that that's all it took, and then they scored easy to score a bunch of runs when they got the base load with nobody yeah. out. And what's so. with the uh, what was the pitcher the the pitcher that the Mets the last game all innings Familia or no Matt Harvey Harvey the guy that oh, should he not out of have night. stayed yeah. in the game. Yeah, no. So is it true that the manager is supposed to keep their cool, their rational cool, and not let their heart and emotions get in the way? Yes, just like Doc so Brown. Why? Like, and back to his future three, Doc Brown. It's the World Series. Why would the manager just say, you know what? We're in the moment. Just eh, go with my feelings and let him pitch the last inning. D- well, see, a, a Boston Red Sox manager did that with Pedro Martinez. I don't know if you remember that, Paul. Yeah, that was... Grady Little, I think. Okay. He, uh, they, they left Pedro Martinez in, and he gave up that home run to Aaron Boone, mm-hmm. and that ended their chances. That was the that was the so, year before the Red Sox won their first recent championship, right? Was that the game where Pedro said, uh, I might as well call the Yankees my daddy or something? <laughs> I think it was that series. <laughs> okay. But uh right. yeah, so so with this thing, it was the same thing. Uh uh Matt Harvey, he he just said, "Hey, no, I can do this. I I got this. I got this." And uh uh kept him in, right? Well, he uh he walked for it. Walked a couple, right? So yeah, he walked the first guy and, and the lead off. He still left him in oh, right. and then he gave up a double and <laughs> so at what that's point when he took him in. <laughs> at what point I mean obviously it was then but you would think okay he walked him I should take him out it should have yeah he should, I mean first of all he should go with what he thinks is best not mm-hmm. not be persuaded by the player yeah that's like this but if you do leave him in that's okay but you just let him face one batter if you can't get him out, then you take him out. Yeah, that's like my students taking control of my class, telling me when they should turn in the <laughs> midterm papers. Oh, can we have a due in a couple of days or next week or two weeks? I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. but if you, if you did that, you would let them have one chance to, to do it. And then if they still are late, then that's it. Right. They're out of there. You fail them. Right. Give them an F. And that's it, yeah. But uh, in, in Bochi will do that, right? Bochi. <laughs> that's my Bochi. <laughs> yeah. That's my Bochi impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do impersonation. Pearl. Bochi, buy them those Kansas City Royals pizza. 
<laughs> That's Bochi there. Make sure you contaminate that pizza with some E. coli. Sounds, sounds like the Cookie Monster. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Is Bochi the Cookie Monster? No, he's got more like an accent like this now. Right? He kind of, oh, well, uh, I'm gonna have to give him a day. Uh, <laughs> Let's buy him some pizza. <laughs> Why pizza? Not not hamburgers or hot dogs. And, and Bochi's always licking his lips too. I don't know if he knows that. I know why he's in the <laughs> interview. He, he has that catcher's dry mouth. A whole lot of dirt in my mouth <laughs> from all those years. All too <laughs> much chewing tobacco back in the day. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. All right. Well, that, that was nice of the Giants to send the whole team. Mm-hmm. E. coli pizza. <laughs> Laced. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's got some potent, deadly powers that's going to have the effect in 2016. I would be real hesitant about eating a pizza like that. You yeah. know, I, I don't know. But I guess it's the tradition, though. It's now the tradition. But this is the first time the team that beat the team the year before sent them a pizza uh-huh. right yeah so wait what so was, what it's was a little it, different what was it before yeah. what was it before what would they do there was a, a different tradition if the team were well the no. red Sox last year i guess sent the giants a pizza okay red Sox yes. had won the world series in 2013 so they sent the giants a pizza just to congratulate them on winning it this year oh, but see. this time the giants beat the royals last year uh-huh so it's almost like they're saying, oh, we're glad you were able to celebrate the way we did last year. Almost like, you know, this is our, we're sorry you had to lose last year. We're going to give you a pizza since you won it this year. Okay. That's, uh, you know, a con- uh, cons- consolation. You know, we, mm-hmm. we, we had, you know, we are better than you. you it took you a little <laughs> bit longer to get there. You finally got there. So here's our uh, E. coli pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they sent the pizza to people in the front office out to all the royals front office employees and and then the next day they all stayed home because they were violently <laughs> ill <laughs> just like uh well like george costanza was able to avoid right um costanza yeah he oh. was the only one who didn't get violently ill oh yeah that's right <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. So, so you you think the Royals were uh, would have? Well, if the Giants were in the World Series this year, do you think uh, they would have still beaten the mm. won the World Series? The Royals there. I think so because you know what? At the end of this series, I think the Royals were. Let's see, seven and one. Or six and one in games that Madison Bumgarner didn't pitch in World Series games. Hmm. So just so, think, think about, about that. The, as long yeah. as they don't have to face him, they can win their World Series. So just he, <laughs> okay. Well, but last year, what Bumgarner pitched game one, right? Mm-hmm. Game game five, game mm-hmm. seven. So yeah. that one that one loss, right? Wow. Oh, that was a game I went to. Oh, that was a good game, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. how they got their four wins, right? That's the only... <laughs> yeah. So that how would... Only... Yeah. Well, Bumgarner could have done the same thing this time, right? Who's to say he could have done it? He could have. Yeah. And but then... that's... Uh, yeah, that's where the, the Giants need a little more starting pitching. Yeah, they need to work on their... Yeah, well, they that's on. That's why it didn't seem likely last year because I think the besides Bumgarner, there were some holes there, but they still got it done. So that's true. And if if and I I don't know. I want to say that they they've shown improvement from last year, even though they couldn't make it. Oh. Yeah, I don't think offense is going to be their problem. It's going to be more about getting a solid number two pitcher and a, a you know a good number three starter and then yeah. you have pv and kane to round out the rotation what do you yeah, think about, what yeah. Do you, you think? should li- listen to the la doyer uh, talk they're all let's sell off the whole team oh my gosh you gotta get rid of but didn't they get rid of the manager mattingly 
Uh, did they? I don't know if he's officially fired. Is that what they did? Yeah, well, they agreed to part ways. And <laughs> oh. I, I think <laughs> that was part mainly ways. because Mattingly knew he could get the Marlins manager job, and he was just hired on, I think, Tuesday. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so that that's how LA is, you know. They just it's all doom and gloom now. Mm. now they they were close to winning that series, but uh, yeah, no no cigar. No. Uh, so what, what do you guys think about Bochi's performance for the season? How he managed the giant the Giants team. Well, was it any different than last? The 2014. Look, if you were going to give an award to the best manager <clears throat> in baseball, who would you who would you give it to? Uh, this year, yeah, I probably would give it to Mike Matheny for really? the Cardinals. Oh yeah, because they had just as many injuries as the Giants did, <clears throat> and they are still able to win. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't, and I didn't pay enough attention to the Cardinals. I just know that they had over a hundred wins, and they had, yeah, they did have a lot of injuries, um, but they still managed to get in. Yeah, yeah but they played in the toughest division. Yeah. Well, so, so you're you're saying the Cubs, right? Because they played the Cubs a lot of times, and Pittsburgh a lot of times. So they had a good record against those two teams. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. yeah, somehow they were able to. I don't know how all those three of those teams were able to win so many games in one division. Because you'd think they would beat each other up, but somehow they piled on the wins, even though well, they were all playing each other. Well, I, I guess if you were to look at it, they probably had about. They were probably on even uh, ground when it came to head-to-head matchups, and then they just beat up on everybody else. I, I think that's probably the way it would look if you were to go back and look at all the records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think about the 2016 season for the Giants? How's it looking? What are you, what are you expecting? What are you hoping? What, what needs to be done differently? So, I mean, already the first move the Giants decided not to make was to bring Aoki back. They didn't pick up his option yesterday, so... That was a mistake, or you don't think that was a good idea? Well, they can still re-sign him. It's just they're not... It was going to be for like $5 million, so instead of picking that up, they're going to see what else they can get in free agency or maybe make a trade and then try to get, you know, an outfielder that way. Mm Mm-hmm. But they can always get Aoki back, probably for less. And, and then, I mean, no matter which way they go, I think their offense is fine. Okay. It's just their starting pitching. Yeah. So as long as they get, uh, you know, a good outfield and, and some some infield depth, because they're always getting, you know, Panic and Crawford were just used way too much, mm-hmm. then they should be able to, you know, keep their players on the field because they were just hurt too much. Yeah, I read somewhere that they were thinking about uh, buying or what's the guy in the Kansas Royals, the pitcher with the long dreads. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to refer to him as the black pitcher. Quato? Are you Quato. talking about Quato? Quato. Quito. Oh. Yeah, well, he he uh, he's a good pitcher. Especially I mean, pitching great. What was it? The last what game yeah, was that? The fourth game four. Game, game four. He pitched amazing, and now yeah. And, and by the way, the Royals have two uh, really good black pitchers. But uh, <laughs> to start so, uh, just start so wait, let's just make sure our Indonesian <laughs> listener understands what we mean by black. There. <laughs> The, well, don't forget Volquez. He's he's pretty good. <laughs> we have to. They're, they're, they're what, Latin American. Latin American. Yeah, so oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Specific. Let's be. Yes. We need to be politically politically correct. correct. Otherwise, yeah. the government will yank us out of the airways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you have Quato. So did that sound right, Paul? Did you heard something like that, or? Well, Quato is one of the guys that they'd probably be interested and Grinky. in. I'm sure they'll. Granko. Granky is probably the Grinky. top preference. You don't and think Granky wants? There's David Price. 
Wait, Granky's not doesn't want to be on the Doyer still. Not the uh, way he. Yeah. That's one of the options. I mean, yeah. he knows he can make a lot of money. That's why he opted out of his. You mean they're contract. not they're not playing for the heart or in the love of the game? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you then you listen to L.A. radio, they're all yeah. They need to get rid of Granky, or or he's. They, they, there's no reason they should try to re-sign him. He's, he's too old now. <laughs> he's an old man. He's an old man. Well, I mean, he's gonna. He, what he's gonna try to do is sign this really expensive multi-year contract, right? Because uh-huh. he's gonna try to see what he can get away with. He's in the middle of his career, and yeah, he's most likely on the uh, decline, as they would say. Eventually, I mean, that's where you have to be careful, and that's why not many teams. I like to hand out these long contracts to pitchers because only the first couple years are any good. And then the last three or four, the guy's hurt or he just doesn't pitch that well. So yeah. you have to be careful with that. That's So that's where I think if the Giants had their way, they would have traded for Cole Hamels at the trade deadline and not even have to worry about trying to sign one of these guys. Or which so one? that's yeah. why they're all saying, you know, there's – different ways that you can go about trying to get a starting pitcher. You don't have to sign a huge big name free agent. You can do it in different ways. And how about relief pitching for the Giants? You- well, they have young guys that are I think pitched really well this past year. Mm-hmm. Like Hunter Strickland and Josh Osich. Oh, yeah. Those Osage guys are ready to yeah, take on a, a role for the whole year and, and not just half the year. Mm-hmm. So they, I think they're fine there. It would be nice if they could get a closer, like a real oh, that's what I mean. bona fide closer. 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 Like closer. if they could get somebody in to be their legitimate closer, then that pushes everybody down an inning and it makes mm-hmm. their bullpen that much better. <clears throat> Who do you but think? I don't know if they're going to go that route because they're usually more expensive. Oh, really? But but did we see Casilla really go down much uh, this year? He's had his moments, but I don't know. He, he, I mean, he, he, I think his his 2014-2015 season, I think they're real similar, right? Yeah, there wasn't a big drop-off. It was just because they didn't have as much <laughs> – they weren't consistent enough. He – his loss, his blown saves seem to be more magnified. Like they hurt the team more because they were in the middle of long losing streaks instead of just one loss here, two losses there. His blown save would end up dragging out losing streaks longer. So who's who's available? Do you know for closers? <laughs> well, there's always Chapman if someone wants to trade for him. But he's Charlie be Chapman. Expensive. What's that? Charlie Chapman? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Araldis Chapman. Uh, yeah, Araldis, yes. Well, we, we got to be clear because uh, our Indonesian listener might yeah. be a fan of Charlie Chapman. <laughs> Araldis Chapman can throw 104 miles per hour. That that Chapman. You would have to give up a lot though, to get him. And how would you describe his ethnicity? <laughs> <laughs> Is he African American? He's the Latin American. Latin American. <laughs> Latin American. And his okay. balls are on fire when he <laughs> <laughs> he throws he throws fiery he throw, balls. He throws his fiery own balls. balls. Kind of put a hole in the catcher's mitt. I guess we're always going to be referring back we, to balls. Speaking of balls, I have we I have a I don't know. If, okay, so the <laughs> what the question <laughs> is Tom Hanks. Is Tom Hanks the greatest peeing actor of all I, time? Of all time. Are you getting this from a listener? This question? Or what's going uh, on? Yeah, where where is this coming from? Wait, 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 I don't understand. <coughs> on uh, line this, one. This, this is kind. This is kind of uh, random. Totally random. Remember, this is a podcast of stuff. A show yeah. about stuff, like Seinfeld. A show about nothing. So, so we're saying Tom Hanks might be the greatest peeing actor. Right. Of all time. And what, what, so re- where did he demonstrate this peeing okay. ability? So, for example, here's a clip of Tom Hanks. 
in a league of their own. Uh, okay. All right. Let's fire it up. All right. Let's listen. So he walks into the the locker room with the girls. Uh, with the girl, okay. Yeah, he just walked into the bathroom. He's a coach or manager of the team. He's gonna pee in the women's bathroom. Okay. I can I can barely hear that peeing. All right, I'm gonna turn it up. It's a trickle. That's- <laughs> here, here a little bit. Find him at least. Give me a watch. Could be a record. Oh, that house. How long? Still going. Yeah, he, he's peeing for. A minute and 35, 35 seconds. So he's probably got the longest longest peeing scene in, in Hollywood I history. I, I would think that that long of a pee would qualify him as the best peeing actor in Hollywood. Okay, so that enough, you know, should, should qualify him, right, for having the longest pee scene. But he's also that, pretty dramatic. That's just one movie. Though. Yeah, that's just one movie. Here's that here's, is just one movie. Here's Tom Hanks in the Green Mile where he's suffering from um, a urinary tract infection. And he's trying he's, he can be very dramatic. Just listen, listen. Okay. <laughs> It's painful. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. That's dramatic. That's that's an Academy Award worthy for best peeing scene. Yeah, and, but we got to be careful. We got to be politically correct for all those urinary tract infection listeners. <laughs> oh, that's true. We have to be sensitive to our, our all of our listeners. Right. Yeah. It sucks to it's have a serious medical condition. Yeah. If you're if yep. you're peeing stones out of your urethra, we apologize. Yeah, they you. they can appreciate his dramaticism. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean that's two movies and I mean that's that's not a big deal. Like, it's just a coincidence. I don't know. Well, were the movies around came out around the same time or uh, the Green Mile, I think, was 1999. Okay. Uh, League of Their Own was probably in the late. That early, was like 92. Early 90s. Um, the Forrest Gump, he, there was a. I don't think he peed in the scene, but he referred to peeing. Would that count? Right. Right. That does. So that's that's the thing. Is he not only does he pee on film, but almost every film he references pee. Yeah. So there's. So the, like the top 10 Tom Hanks peeing movies, ones where he either pees or references pee. I mean, there's a league of their own. Yeah. And the terminal, I guess he suddenly needs to pee. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's actually in the road to perdition, which I don't know if you remember that movie from the yeah. early 2000s. That was a really good movie. That was dumb. But in that one, peeing is actually a huge is that part a, of the plot because that, at the end he's about to be killed by by this hitman and so he tom hanks excuses himself to go to the bathroom and that actually saves his life because it gives him time to escape That's so right. urinating actually saved his life are you so saying you gotta go pee, say, go just, pee. say uh, albert was to write a uh, script uh-huh. uh, a movie script and then he was to try to cast Tom Hanks, and, and he was to incorporate some peeing scene that Tom Hanks would have an inkling to uh, <laughs> a tinkling, a tinkling, a, t- <laughs> <laughs> a tinkling to to be part of Albert's movie. Uh, Maybe that would be like he would read the script. You like? I, I don't think so. I'm, I'm no, not. I'm not going to do this, no, Mr. No, Felice, not, no, director. I'm sorry. But then you tell him, well, skip to page 108. 
<laughs> and you're oh, okay, then character goes into the bathroom and pees. <laughs> All right, I'm doing it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in. He's, he's on I'm a roll. In. He's got a history. Yeah, a long you should do it. History. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's try right. to cast Tom Hanks. I wonder if anyone else has caught on onto, onto this peeing streak. Oh. Yeah, because there's that's the thing is people put if you search YouTube, there's actually this whole like. 10 minute video on this guy <laughs> talking about this eerie uh oh really legend you know <laughs> wow that people actually talk about it. So like this- i said the top 10 list it keeps going on there's some movie the money pit where he has to show off his ability to pee forrest gump he talks he talks to kennedy and says yeah you know that he needs to pee when he shakes his hand and kennedy laughs Castaway, of course. He goes to the ocean, pees in there. <laughs> Apollo thirteen in the spaceship. <laughs> he, he has to pee on the ship. <laughs> How do you pee in outer space? You pee in your <laughs> right. spacesuit, or Sa- even Saving Private Ryan? He 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 talks about how they miss home and and Tom Hanks. Thinks about a bully at school who who peed the letter V. It's t- <laughs> some type of joke. So, so <laughs> a has green anybody... mile, and then even Captain Phillips. Oh, I didn't remember see that. in Captain Phillips when he's in the he's being held hostage. He he tries to escape by trying to tell faking that he actually needed to pee. Wow. Tom, I think so. So he. So if somebody was to confront Tom Hanks about this. You think he'd talk about it, or I? I don't know. Hmm. I think he. You'd probably. You could name an award after this uncanny ability to incorporate peeing into every single movie that he does. Now, what I think was it in the Green Mile where the was it John John Coffee. Is his mm-hmm. name John Coffin? Coffee. He, Coffee. He uh, he grabs Tom Hanks. He was a security guard. He grabs him, <laughs> pulls him towards him. And remember, he has a special ability or skill or power to heal. Yeah. So Tom Hanks had a urinary tract infection, and to heal Tom Hanks, he had to pull him forward, pull him towards the jail cell, jail cell, and yeah. he reached underneath and grabbed his balls his testicles his testicles right right yeah and then by grabbing him he was able to send some special gift or power <laughs> into his testicles right healing power into yeah. his testicles thereby eliminating the stone that was blocking his urethra <laughs> so I just thought that was a uh, and true story. It's, it's a, a true, true story, true, a true true story, story that was acted out. And after on, that, he was film. able to pee happily. Yeah. Pee. So, so you're saying Coffee's ability to grab his testicles was uh, <laughs> sufficient. Sufficient. <laughs> but but he had he had powers. He had a gift from God, right? Yeah. To to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, he had other. There are other miracles he performed on the in the movie. Yeah. And, but that was the greatest one of them the, all. That was the best one. I think Tom Hanks, that's what made him want to do the film. When he, read well, that, yeah. when he read that part in the script, he's like, all right, he, this guy's going to grab my testicles. God's going to heal them. And I can pee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, you got to work on that script now. Yeah. And I think all these other actors need to catch up. Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Denzel Washington. They they need to get going on this. Yeah. Well maybe I, they could do some a little twist on it and, yeah. and like taking dumps or something. I don't know. You can't you can't be the same as Tom huh. Hanks. All right. Instead of doing the peeing, you could do the diarrhea pooping. <laughs> like ben, ben Stiller would qualify. Ben, yeah, maybe see. Ben Stiller can start off, or uh, yeah, or even Jeff, Will Jeff, Dan- Jeff Daniels in uh, Dumb and Dumber. And <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you got to play that clip one of these days. All right, uh, so 
uh, it's coming. It's about it's about almost an hour. We've been. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, so we should wrap up, and I, I'm trying to think of a way to what we should do to end our podcast or stuff cast. And I'm thinking Ye- we could either do uh, movie reviews, a music review, or we could play a silly game, just like the Motley Fools do in their podcast, where they would ask qu- they would ask their uh, their guest speaker buy, sell, or hold. Um, Donald Trump's toupee. You know, would you would you buy, hold, or sell? <laughs> um, right. So <laughs> I think you should go with the game. The game. Uh, go with the game. Yeah, and it will go with that question. <laughs> buy, so, sell. <laughs> what is it? So buy, buy, sell, or hold Donald Trump's hairdo. <laughs> so if you were to treat his hairdo like a stock, would you buy it, sell it, or hold it? Okay, I think I would I would hold it. Okay, literally and, and in it, your hands. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I'd, I, we wouldn't sell it. We would first of all, we'd have to hold it because I haven't seen the toupee in real life. And usually, what you need to do is you have to see the back of it. That will really tell you if it's real or fake. <laughs> no, because I've seen this. I I remember going on a trip for work, and there was one of the directors. He actually did have a toupee. And you could tell the way it was kind of mismatching from the back of the <laughs> neck. There, there's a mismatch uh-huh. between hair colors. Of- so until we actually see that in person, I don't think we can make that call. That's a good, I mean, I know that, it looks like a, a mat, you know, from from uh, watching it on TV. But until we we'll really find out from the from actually seeing it, we can't we can't make right. that call. That, that's a good that's a good explanation. That's a good reason why you should hold. Okay. His toupee. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul. What about Paul? I don't know. I, I, I think it's actually real. So I would, okay. I mean, I would have to buy that. <laughs> For the, it has value. If you look at, because if you study, so if you want to pull up some pictures, you can do this, but if you study his hair, it actually. It's like a backwards comb over where it comes from <laughs> the back of his skull and covers the front. You know, most wait, wait, comb we, overs we are right. like side to side. Yeah. His is back to front. So oh, I think God. I would have to buy that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's trying to be different from the great comb over. He's got the, the back great over. back back comb over. over. The back. Back comb. into the front. Back Phoenix into style. the front comb over. Okay. I, that, I yeah. yeah. I think I would buy two because <laughs> I think our our nation, our country, is going to vote for Donald Trump, and that's going to be the hot commodity item. Now, <laughs> everyone's going to be wearing. Everyone's these. either either going to wear toupees or they're going to do the back over, the back home over. Uh, well, did any of you guys walk around and? Because uh, I didn't see this when I was out in Halloween, but did we see any Donald Trumps out there? No, I didn't. I, I didn't yeah. notice any. Don- I would have expected more, hmm. but I didn't really see That's any. That's a good idea, though, to dress up as Trump. Donald Trump's out there. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you have to make a wig, like a, an actual wig for people to wear, and this will help his election effort. <laughs> yeah. Because you're going to see a bunch of Trump heads. <laughs> Trump heads. <laughs> yeah, but that's more of a liberal thing to do because, uh, you know, those the Republicans, they. Uh, they don't like to be made fun of. You know, no. they don't like to crack jokes. So, I don't know. They 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 wouldn't want to poke fun at their own candidates. Whereas <laughs> a Democrat, a liberal, they don't mind. They don't right. mind poking fun at their own guys. Yeah. yeah. All I right. Why he wears that hat? That Make America Great Again hat. <laughs> it seems like it's to like it has some hair attached to it. I think. Well, see, then, then, it's a clip then, on. Now the you, clip you on. Can't, you can't change your position. You said you said to sell to, 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 to no, buy. Buying. It. He's buying. I'm buying his hair, but I'm selling the hat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sell the hat with the clip that, on. Hair. That hat might lead you to believe that he didn't quite get it on in time, <laughs> and to, for when he was making his public appearance. Do you think Trump? Would, do you think Trump would grow long hair? When he runs, or, may- when he becomes or maybe president. maybe he didn't have a chance to trim his his toupee that day, and it was too long, and he had to wear the hat. <laughs> it was just a bad hair day for him. Yeah, 
Yeah. Every day is a bad hair day day for Donald Trump. (laughs) Every day. Uh, It's all all bad hair days. Uh, All right. So, is that it? I think we're at I the think that's it. Anyway. minute and two mark. We're going over. Oh, oh no. Wow. It's I, over. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't record. Shoot. Huh? Didn't, didn't record the podcast. Ah, shoot. We got to uh. do it over again. You want to start over? <laughs> all right. We're going to. All right. Welcome. So we're going to start over. We can't, right? we can't recreate that. We're no, going to start over. No way. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. You guys ready? <laughs> Play that music. All right, welcome to ASP. St- <laughs> no, okay, that was recording. All right. All right. Okay. Very good. So, I, all, right. <laughs> all right. So, we'll see you guys next week. Sign off. Uh, uh, see you all, or listen uh, to you all later from Indonesia. There. Yes, Indonesia. Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Before we go, and I'm gonna have, in case we do have subscribers, I'm gonna create our own email. So listeners could send us questions or comments and thoughts, and we can have our own little segment where uh, people, we can read their email and answer their questions if they have any. Okay. So Eventually, we'll have a phone line, and people can call in. And they can call in. But what I'll do in the meantime, I'll just pretend that I'm someone who's sending emails to okay. ASP stuff. All right, and, good, yeah. good. Uh, All right. Don't don't pretend. We, they don't need to know that. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Talk and to you guys all later. Talk all right. to you later. And we'll close out with the song from Zewa. This is called Ma Nesheswell. Himira Mishra. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.